Today, I'm gonna to teach you exactly how to create these viral real estate transitions inside of DaVinci Resolve. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. More on that later. And I want a quick note that each of these transitions can be made in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And I've even turned one of these effects into a preset so you can just drag and drop and use it as you please. If you wanna find out how to use that, make sure you stick around as I'll talk about it later. For the first transition of pushing through TV, this can be done with any type of rectangular frame. So this can be a TV or a picture frame or a, or a piece of art. It can be anything that's square or rectangle hanging on a wall. And as far as filming it, it's super simple. All you need to do is just a straight push towards the object that you want to zoom through. That's it. All you have to do is that push. Let's start with the TV transition. Let's drag our footage onto our timeline, just like so. Uh, and what we're gonna do to start is we're just gonna trim off some excess. So the start, we don't actually need. So let's maybe go right here, hit Control R, add a speed point, uh, because on top of this TV animating, we're also doing a speed ramp in the midst of it. So we need to do that speed ramping first. Let's grab the right side and drag this all the way over to the left. Uh, and then let's go into the keyframe panel up here. Let's close our media pool and you'll see all your parameters. You're going to make sure everything is deselected other than retime speed. Go into retime curves right over here and you're going to see your speed map. What you're going to do is you're going to grab your keyframe and you're going to hit ease in and out. And this is usually where I ran stuck because I would try smooth it out, but because the ease in and out are linked, you can only ease it in so much and it never looked that good. But this is where there's a speed ramping tip that if you don't use it in DaVinci Resolve, your speed ramps are not going to look near as good as they could. So and that tip is, is if you grab this handle, you can hold shift and drag it all the way to the right. And you can see that you have independent control, which this now looks more like a cubic curve, which is what you want for speed ramping uh, than an S curve. So it looks quite good. And if we play this back, uh, you can obviously see it speed ramps in a little bit. Let's actually drag this in a little bit because I don't, I want a little bit more speed ramping. That's a little bit better. And let's maybe increase the speed. There we go. Now it's sort of flicking forward. That's great. All right, now we're going to go into the fusion page. With the media one selected, we're gonna hit shift spacebar and add a tracker node. Uh, I'm just gonna select this to have a single viewer right in the middle. If you are on the free version of Resolve, you will have a, a point tracker. If you're on the paid version, you'll have access to this Intelli tracker. And the Intelli tracker is a little bit better, but both are gonna work completely fine. Uh, that being said, let's go into operation and change the operation mode from none to corner positioner. Let's Let's roughly drag these right over to the corners of the TV. Let's zoom in all the way onto our clip and line this up a little bit more precisely. Something just like that. And now you're gonna go back to trackers and track forwards and reverse. All right, now that you have that tracked, that is great. You're gonna grab a background right here and pipe it into the green input of your tracker. And then in the tracker, you're gonna go into operation and then change the operator mode from over to stencil, just like so. And that's gonna cut out whatever this background is being tracked to. So now you can see that the TV is perfectly cut out, uh, which is great because that means we can zoom into our next clip. But we don't want the TV to be cut out during the entire portion of this clip. So there's two ways that you could animate this. First, you could just do a, a simple blend. So this is what most people would do, is you can take your media one and drag it in front of your tracker, just like so. So now we have this media one, it's going into the tracker, but also merging over top. And this will now blend our screen off and on. So we could go somewhere to the start, set a blend at one, and then go to the end, blend it down. And now obviously you can see that as we push through the TV, uh, the opacity of the TV is going down. But in this case, we are going to animate the screen. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna take both the background and the tracker, control C and control V to paste it. And then we're gonna take our media one and pipe it back into this tracker right here. And then we're actually going to take our media one, hit control C and control V again to copy it. Or we're gonna pipe this tracker into the mask input of media one. So we actually need to go into the tracker and change the operation mode from foreground over background to foreground only. And now if we look at the tracker, what's happening is we just have this black screen floating in empty space and that can work as a bitmap to then mask the media one. So now we have a mask of just the TV. And now after that, let's add a transform node so that we have some control over the positioning of the TV. And let's put that back over top of the tracker. By far, one of the most common questions I get asked down below in my comment section is how did you learn DaVinci Resolve? And the answer, a lot of painstaking hours. 
but it doesn't have to be the same for you. I was recently given access to Skillshare and I took two classes, a DaVinci Resolve masterclass and a class about sound design. And I picked up specific shortcuts that I didn't know before and I learned more efficient and effective ways to work in the Fairlight tab inside of DaVinci Resolve. What I particularly love about these classes is that they give you the resource material available for download so that you can follow along in real time and work with the instructor. Plus, every class has a built-in community section where you can get feedback and help from other learners and the instructor and get answers to all of your questions. And if you didn't know, Skillshare has thousands of creative classes taught by world-class professionals about videography, photography, design, motion graphics, you name it. And the first 500 people to use my link down below in the description or scan this QR code will get one month free trial of Skillshare to try out for yourself. It's free. Go ahead and try it. Now, if we look at our final image, we have the exact same result as what we started with, but we have control over just the TV screen. But we want this TV to hide behind the wall, not in front of it. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this to the right here so you can see what I'm doing is you're gonna take your tracker and pipe it into the mask input of the merge as well. And now what's happening is it's only allowed to show where that TV originally was, but we can move it and it looks like it's moving behind the wall. But now on the edit page, let's choose where we want Want this animation to actually happen so i'm gonna say right around here i'm gonna hit m and then i'm gonna go forward and hit another m when i want the animation to be done maybe right there and now if we go into the fusion page we can grab this transform go into the spline editor so that we can see these keyframes or so that we can see these markers that we just added which they're right here uh and we'll go to the first one again with the transform selected let's hit a keyframe on position or center and then let's go to the second one and let's drag that tv down off of screen just like so. With the spline editor still open, let's hit zoom to fit, grab both keyframes and hit S to just smooth out that animation. And importantly, let's grab the merge and add a keyframe on blend and then one keyframe forward. Let's turn the blend all the way down because if we don't, this TV would still be peeking through as the hole in the wall gets larger as we're pushing closer to it. But obviously we're not getting close enough to the TV right now to make this an actual transition, which is fine because we're gonna add another transform after that right there put a keyframe on size and center go to the last frame in the clip just like so and we're going to increase the size until it's taking up most of the screen uh, if you're maxed out you can just type in a higher number let's say like seven uh, and that's pretty close it doesn't have to perfectly cover because imagine if you're zooming in uh, the next frame it's going to be disappearing anyways so you don't need these edges to be hidden on the screen this is completely fine. Let's make sure we go into the spline editor and with our transform two selected, zoom to fit, grab both, hit ease and ease in cubic. And now that's also gonna, along with the speed ramp, sort of punch into the screen. And if we play this back, you can see that we start zoomed out, screen animates down and we zoom into the screen. That looks great. We need to obviously put a clip underneath that. So let's select the clip, hold alt and press the up key to move this clip onto the second track. Let's go into the media pool. We can close the keyframes for now. Uh, and I'm gonna use this shot of the living room and I'm gonna drag that onto the timeline. And we need to make sure that this clip is lined up with this marker right here. And then we wanna match the same speed ramp that we have going on up here. So right when that speed ramp uh, speed point is we're going to hit control R and also add a speed point. Then on this clip, we're going to find a frame that we like for the video to start slowing down, which is maybe right there Add another speed point. And you're going to drag this speed point and speed it up enough so that that speed point lines up with the end of the first clip. But as you can see, the first clip, we're at 3000% speed and the second one, we're only at 1200% speed. So we do need to increase that a little bit so that the motion matches a little bit better. It doesn't have to be perfect, but let's say 2300 is a lot closer. It's going to look a bit better. Let's go into keyframes again. Let's select both keyframes, hit drop down, hit ease in and out. And then again, hold shift to just extend it. And pretty much what I do is I want to ease both sides as much as I can. So I first just grab it, hold it, and and then I hold shift and drag it out even further. And now we have the smoothest speed ramp possible. And now if we play this back, we have a perfectly seamless transition from this living room to the next. Beautiful. When it comes to my favorite effect of the three, it's definitely these cabinets popping in and out. It's also super simple to film. All you need to do is you need to find a focal point straight in front of you with your camera. You need to walk perfectly straight down that line, and then you need to repeat that 
several times in several different takes with some of the cabinets open and some of them not open. So pretty much I walk straight with all the cabinets closed. Then I walk straight again with a couple of them open. Then I walk straight again with a couple different ones open. And then in DaVinci Resolve, we can create this effect uh, that I'm gonna show you right now. All right, for this next effect, let's grab our footage and drag it onto the timeline. So I'm gonna start with all of the kitchen cabinets closed and I'm going to just drag that on right there. And generally you're gonna be doing this to music, but in this case, I'm just gonna sort of be doing this randomly. Um, so let's maybe go right here. Uh, that's where we want our next clip to start. So let's grab another clip, but now with some of the cabinets open uh, and let's drag that on top just like so. And we're gonna turn the opacity down to around 50% so that you can see both at the same time. Now you're just gonna wanna scrub through until uh, the main lines in the shots line up. So in this case, I'm sort of looking at the countertop and this main line. And obviously if I'm sort of right there, that lines up pretty close. Let's drag it to the playhead, hold Alt and press down because that's just gonna move it straight down without any movement side to side. And now if we play this back, we have a rough cut between the two clips. And then let's do it with the next clip. Again, let's drag this on top of our other clip turn the opacity down to maybe 50 or so, uh, and then scrub backwards and forwards until that lines up as close as possible. So you can see that my faucet here, for example, is lined up pretty close. Hold Alt, drag it down, turn the opacity up to 100%. And now to just get a little bit more variation still, because now we only have one, two transitions. Now let's add another cut, and we're actually going to bring the second clip right here back in front because it's going to look different because we're at a different spot in the video. So let's just drag this forward and it's already lined up timing wise. So we can just drag this out like this, hit control B to cut it and then drop that down into place. Trim this back up, hold alt and draw, drop that down into place. And then the same thing, let's end on the clean version without any of the cabinets open, just like so. Extend it, hold alt, drop it down and then let's drop this down as well. And now you can see that we're going from cabinets to different cabinets and then back to all the cabinets closed again. And then let's just extend this like so. And I actually want to speed ramp this into reverse from this point on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a speed point here uh, and I'm going to change the speed to reverse. I'll add another speed point here and then I'm gonna scrub through to the end of the clip, which is right around there. And then just increase that speed quite drastically. Uh, and that's gonna push it back into reverse. But let's smooth this out with the keyframes. Let's select all of them and hit smooth like this. Smooth this out again, holding shift to add as much easing as we can. And now this last clip is speed ramping in reverse. But obviously this looks pretty rough right now. It's pretty janky. So we're gonna add some transitions to smooth this out. Now Smooth Cut, I'm pretty sure is a paid version in DaVinci Resolve. So you can definitely just use a cross dissolve and that is gonna look pretty good. You just want to make them pretty short right? That looks pretty good. But what I'm going to do, it's just going to look a little bit better is use smooth cut on all of them. So I'm dragging smooth cut transitions on them. You want speed warps still enabled. And as far as the duration goes, uh, I would set these all around six frames. That's going to be a good length uh, for this effect. Now, if we play this back, you can see that the cabinets are popping in and out and then it speed ramps fast backwards. And then lastly, for the door closed open effect, it's also pretty simple. All you need to do is just a straight push towards the door with it closed and then a straight push towards the door with it open, trying to line up your lines as perfect as possible. Now we're on the final effect here. So we wanna grab our footage with the door closed and drag that onto the timeline, just like so. And we wanna start the speed ramp so that it ends right about there. Let's add a speed point and let's increase the speed right there, uh, probably around 1600 or so. Uh, and let's just trim it up so that sped portion isn't too long. Um, yeah, something like that probably looks good. And we're gonna take this, we're gonna go into keyframes, we're gonna hit smooth, ease in and out. I'm dragging just until in the top left there that that ease in curve starts touching the start of the clip and then pressing down shift and extending that speed ramp as far as I can. And now if we take our second version of this with the door open, and drag that onto the timeline. We have the exact same thing, but it's going in the other direction. So again, I'm just gonna turn the opacity down to around 50, and I'm going to line this up the best I can. Um, okay, there we go. 
So that lines up the closest possible. So now again, let's trim this up, turn the opacity down and drag this down by holding Alt in the down key. And now if we play this back, you can see it sort of cuts between the two and it's not very smooth, obviously. And that's where we're gonna create a warp transition to make that a whole lot smoother. So in the effects panel, let's go down to effects and add an adjustment clip. Let's hover over our transition and go back 12 frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and extend the adjustment clip there. And then four to 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then cut that right there. And now with our adjustment clip selected, let's add a marker right on the center just so that we can line it up easy. And then let's go into fusion again. Now we're going to add a warper node which is that guy right there. And you can do any type of warp that you might want. I'm just gonna keep it simple. So I'm gonna change the warp mode from curves to points. And then I'm going to go to advanced options and change the limits to around the edges. And that's just gonna add these pin markers around the edges. And in this case, I'm just gonna scrunch in the entire screen a little bit, maybe something like that. But you can still see that we're getting a little bit of transparency here. So let's make sure that the edge behavior, instead of being black, is gonna be reflecting. So that just hides those edges right there. But we need to animate this. On frame 12, which is the center of our transition, let's add a keyframe on warp strength at a value of one, and then go back to frame zero and turn it down to zero. Go to frame 23 and turn it down to zero as well. And now in the spline editor, let's open warp strength, zoom to fit, select all, hit S. And then with these, if you hold control, you get some independent control uh, and we can turn this sort of into this peak and that's gonna give it a bit of a pop effect. And now if we play this back on the edit page, you can see we have this nice warp transition to go in between the two frames and that just hides the cut. Like I said earlier in this video, I've also turned this effect into a preset. So you could go to my PayHip store and find the preset for yourself. That way you can just drag drop and save yourself the hassle of having to build it out every single time. If you do go to my PayHip store, it does support the channel and you get an incredibly good product out of it yourself. Let me show you how to use it. You can go into effects, go to video transitions, type in warp to find the transition and drag it on. And now you have a warp effect just like before, but you have a whole bunch of options to choose from. So with the doors, generally a direction looks good. So if I do like a right warp, now it's gonna warp to the right to flick open the door. And again, you can increase and decrease the length of the transition. You can change the easing and go custom if you'd really like to. It just makes adding that warp transition super fast and super simple. And it works for more than just a door transition. It works for any type of transition and always looks quite good. All right, that's all for today. Thank you so much for checking out this video and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And if you guys have any future recommendations on tutorials that you wanna see, drop them down below in the comments section. Till next time.